teamwork right there. That, that is, is teamwork. That is the fattest bad drive I've ever seen. What's up guys? Hopefully uh, you guys are still learning some things with the, the new little short series. Today it is raining again, which is all right. I actually kind of like the rain, but supposed to head out and go get some more footage today. We're going to do a little bit of shed hunting, a little bit of coyote hunting, but I had to fix the Toyota. I had a couple issues. I had a wheel bearing starting to go out, so I got that fixed. And then once I got it all put back together, my steering was rubbing on my rim. So I had to fix that. Uh, I had a short somewhere and I don't even know where it's at. I think it just finally quit shorting out. It might have been my trailer lighting. Uh, this video is going to be on basically setting up on your stand and figuring out how to set up and where to set up to make the most of it. I'm gonna go over a little bit of Tim's shotgun setup and how to get your bipod set up to, to maximize the, the stand there. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. We'll have another video for you guys tomorrow. I think the 30th is gonna be the last day of these videos. And then we're gonna kind of slow down the videos a, a little bit, I guess. So Tim, let's uh, let's show us your shotgun setup here. Um, well, what I do is I get the camera right here so I can uh, hopefully try to get the coyotes on film. And I have the shotgun right here on my foot so I can just, just, it's fast. I mean, I don't move until the coyote. I'm literally. I'm sitting here like this. He and I go to like the very this. last second. Very last second, I shoot it. But it'd be different if you were just holding the shotgun, or you could honestly, instead of the bipod, if you had a rifle right here, set it down really quick. It's not as not as quick. Yeah. So you actually got to move it. It doesn't matter where you set up, because <laughs> as long as you can see the coyote, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Copy that. Okay, uh, I'm shooting the 12 gauge Hornady Coyote rounds, and I have a Blackhawk shotgun sling. Uh, oh, I forgot to say, one thing I do when I do sit down is I take the sling off, just like, just so I can move it around easier. Good call. And not get it caught on anything. Here. Good call, Sam. See, you're smart. I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> what choke are you shooting? I'm shooting a modified choke because with these coyote rounds, it says on the box, modified is the most choke you can use on it. Copy that. I don't know why that is, it's just the way it is. Just the way it is. And then I got some camo tape on here just to give me a little bit more grip because you know, you gotta do some fast shooting action. Getting Western. Exactly, and then you got shell holders on the sling and this, because I had this before I had this, and I'm too lazy to take this off. Good call. So, Honestly, whatever barrel you use will work just fine. Perfect. So guys, we get asked all the time, what loads do you shoot out of the shotgun? Like I said, Tim shoots the, the Hornady coyote loads. I've got a box of those. I'll show you what those look like in the truck. And I shoot uh, four buck out of mine, but I'm seriously contemplating switching to these. He seems to be doing pretty well with them. So um, I think we're gonna probably all switch. And Garrett has been shooting for years. Um, a nickel plated or copper plated lead BB shot out of his. Honestly, it's one of those things, guys, your, your round needs to match your situation. If you're shooting further, you want to shoot a heavier, like four buck or triple lot buck or something like that. But if you're shooting real close, BB shots, just fine. These Hornady ones seem to be good. What's the furthest you think you shot one this year? Somewhere between 30 and 35 yards the furthest they've got one this year. That's about the furthest I've done too. I, I just don't like to shoot them past that with, with the shotgun. So the next step guys, after you've set up on your stand is to set up your call. If you're hand calling, doesn't matter. You're gonna be just using your hand call. But this is another one of those situations where there is no right or wrong way to do it. It's a uh, situational dependent. So in this situation, um, I know how I would do it. Let's see how these guys would do it and see if it's the same. Cause honestly your hunting style and who you're hunting with and your experiences in the past and how you prefer to hunt is gonna dictate how you're gonna set up this call. So let's see how Hunter would set up on this stand. So the reason we use that guys is because it just gets the call up a little bit higher off the ground. 
And when you're in some like heavier brush and grass like this, it doesn't contact the call when it's trying to turn. I'd put it down here in the wash. Just because if the cots are going to come in, that's where you're going to want them is down here. You're not going to want them close to you unless you have a shotgun like Tim does. And I don't really want the call exposed, so I'd, I'd set it next to a bush. Especially on those sunny days, guys, you don't want anything shining. I'd probably go right here. And I'd try and kind of make it even. If you got to stack rocks or something real quick, it's no big deal. Just to make it even. Just like that. Perfect. So right That's now, guys. 30 yards. 30 yards from where we're sitting. So that is exactly what I was talking about like with the shotgun. How's that for you, Tim? Oh, dead, dead in hell. Dead yeah, in hell. I always make sure Tim wants it right there because if one's coming in close, he's got the shotgun. So. Perfect. Is that good? Right there. He says that's good, so that's good. So yeah, guys, that right there is exactly where I would have put it to for the exact same reasons. You want those coyotes, especially something coming from over here or from hard this direction. You want them down here far enough to where they're not going to get your scent, where your scent still kind of with this wind is blowing across the ridge line. But you also want it close enough that the shotgun can shoot. And that's kind of right there at the, the perfect limit of the range of the shotgun. Even if they were just a little bit further out here, you could still get them with the shotgun. So that's exactly where I would have set it up in this situation too. Let's say for instance though, that you were making this stand or something similar to it, a little bit more open, and all you brought was the rifle. I would have set that call up down just a little further, only because I want those coyotes, when I shoot with the rifle, I like them to be around 50 yards, 50 to 100, 50 to 70 is perfect, but I would have taken that call and put it down closer to the road down there in, in the bottom of the wash. So I have that 50 yards or so range to get them stopped and get them shot. Okay guys, next we're gonna talk about setting up with your bipod on your stand and how to maximize your efficiency with being able to shoot in all directions. We did talk a little bit about this a few episodes ago in the Swagger bipod review, but we'll talk about it again right here. Hunter over here, big water as so, we like to call him. Yeah, so with this stand, it's pretty tight with the big hill in front of us. So for me, I would set up to where I can get both of the washes and then about midway slope in front of the hill. I wouldn't really set up in front of the hill. I would set up on one of the washes. For me, I'm left-handed, so I'm gonna go to my weak side and set up. And I would just make sure that I can get the bottom of the wash and about mid slope to here. So I got the wash and if I need the hillside, I can just kind of lean it back and I got the hillside in front of me. And same for this way. It's usually the same, if not, just kick the sticks out and it'll work. So that's how I'd set up on this. Shooting on like high across and, and low across, I know you do it just slightly different than I do. You, you lean back more to get lower rather than forward, right? Yep. So if one's in front of me on the wash and I have it set up like midway on the hill, I'll just kick these out and pull back and you can go, you can go all the way to the call 50 yards in front of you. So perfect. So yeah, I do it just slightly different. Um, I lean forward. So I kick it out just like he does down the hill that drops your gun down and then I lean forward on it instead of pulling back. So I usually kick it a little further downhill, but once again, guys, there's no right or wrong way to do it. It's all how you prefer to do it. it. There's different ways in every situation and you need to make the determination on what works best for you. All right guys, so the next question we got all the time is how long do you call for? What sounds do you use? And what's your sequence? Everybody also does this different. I've heard it a thousand different ways, but what we usually do is 20 minutes of calling we try to start at a semi low volume in case there's close coyotes that we're not going to blow them out of the country. We generally start with distress sounds. We almost always run distress sounds, jackrabbit, cottontail, baby cottontail, baby jackrabbit. It doesn't matter. Honestly, a distress is a distress for the most part, but we do have our favorite sounds in certain areas that tend to work better. A lot of guys like to start with a howl or some sort of vocals and then move to distress. And sometimes they'll go back and forth with fight sounds. In Eastern Colorado, 
Fox Distress works great back there, but it doesn't work for shit out here, so we don't use it. So there is no perfect sound, there is no right sound, there's no right sequence, it's just a matter of what's working in your area. Try to match the prey in the area. We generally call for about 30 seconds to a minute, turn it off or pause it, probably wait somewhere between two and three minutes and then start again. And I like to fade into it. Garrett has all of the sounds timed and knows exactly when they stop. So he pauses it, but I like to fade in and out. How do you guys do it? I'll do the same thing uh, for sequence. I won't go loud and I'll do, I have a set time on mine too. I know when it stops and when it starts again. So I usually go about 30 seconds for the first sequence, wait a few minutes. And then usually after that, I'll go anywhere between 30 and a minute of calling, waiting a few minutes and just repeat that. And we, we'll usually go 15 to 20 minutes on stands. I just can't sit still for 20. That's he the only issue. Sand, about At about seven <laughs> minutes, <laughs> yeah. that's all Tim's got. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, when do coyotes come in? Anytime. I've had them pop up literally three seconds into calling and we've had one dead before in less than 15 seconds. How the hell that happens, I honestly don't even know, but it did. We've had him come in as late as 22. A friend of ours, he'll call 45 minutes later in the season, and he's killed coyotes at 45 minutes before. So there is no right or wrong with that. Also, you just have to learn your country, learn your coyotes, and adjust from there. But as a standard rule, 20 minutes is right. Honestly, in this country right here where it's steeper and more canyons, I wouldn't go more than probably 15. I would go 15 minutes here purely because there's nowhere a long ways away that it's going to take a coyote more than 15 minutes to get here that he could actually hear it from. So if he's within the range and he's going to come in, he's going to come in within 15 minutes. Uh, got anything else to add to that? Uh, when to switch sounds? So a lot of people ask, do you always use the same sound the full 20 minutes? No, I typically don't. I'll usually go about eight minutes and then I'll switch a sound and then the last four minutes I'll switch to another sound if we haven't gotten any. It all depends. Some people just use the same sound the whole time and it works. Some people don't. Yeah. So sometimes it seems like a certain sound just sets them off. Like we'll be playing something for what, like ten minutes, and as soon as we switch sounds, something just comes barreling in. Like it seems like they could be coming in slow, and then as soon as they hear that sound, it just sets them off. I think that's that switch in sounds absolutely. At about that eight to 12 minute mark, I think that absolutely kind of helps those those hesitant coyotes, whether they're like, oh, I'm gonna go or I'm gonna not. They hear something slightly different and they're like, oh yeah, there's something else going on there. I'm safe, I'm gonna come in. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. It seems to work for us also. We do the same thing. We switch at about 10 minutes and then sometimes we'll even switch up right towards the end. Thanks again for watching guys. Don't forget that we're gonna have the new hats uh, up at the Salt Lake Western Hunter Hunting and Conservation Expo. Uh, February 13th through the 16th and we will see you tomorrow for another episode and I believe we're going over tomorrow on what to do when a coyote comes in how to get him killed because there's a lot of ways to do that and once again there's no right or wrong way uh, we'll show you guys though the general ways that we do it and get you guys the basics and you can build off it from there thanks for watching